Hi there, welcome to ITY TV. Today we're speaking with Azul CEO Scott Sellers, who's visiting Australia this week. Thank you so much for joining us, Scott. Thank you, David. Great to, to see you today, and uh, thanks for the opportunity to, to speak about Azul. Oh, thank you. So, I guess what brings you to Australia? We're always we're always delighted to have people visit Australia, but I'm keen to understand what uh, what brings you to our neck of. Well, thank you very much. It's uh, first time I've been here, and uh, we we started in in Sydney. Spent the first part of the week in Sydney, and and calling in today from Melbourne. We've been here for the back half of the week, and it's just it's been wonderful. And uh, to your question, uh, we're, we're here to continue to drive interest in, in Azul and, and our products with uh, uh, some customers that we already have here, some fantastic customers um, that are already Azul customers, but um, uh, of course meet with with new customers and prospects, but also really begin to, to build out a, a channel and distribution network that we're quite excited uh, uh, about what we're doing and, and you know being able to serve an even broader Australian market. Yeah, wonderful. I guess one thing to start with is cloud you know the world loves cloud and a lot of businesses ran to the cloud which was great but i think companies are now beginning to experience sticker shock and are seeing that you know maybe uh moving everything to the cloud running just shifting virtual machines doing whatever replicating workloads they might have had on premise 24 7 is beginning to cost a bit so i understand azul really does a lot on cloud cost optimization is that something you can tell me more about Absolutely. So I, I think, as, as you said, um, the, the cost of cloud is starting to become, you know, not only just sort of a mid-level concern in many enterprises, it's becoming a concern at the at the C-level, the CFO level, sometimes at the CEO level. Um, some of the enterprises that we speak with, it's a board level conversation at this point. It's becoming so profound. And I, I think a lot of it is, you know, when you think about an enterprise's cloud journey, a lot was promised in cloud, and frankly, a lot of that has been realized, right? In terms of the the flexibility that cloud provides, there's a significant amount of developer productivity that cloud enables in terms of being able to use first party services provided by Amazon or, or Microsoft with Azure or Google Cloud, et cetera. So undoubtedly, there's very real benefit of being in cloud and cloud, of course, now there's more there's more money being spent in cloud than there is in, in data center. So, so the train left the station, right? So cloud is here to stay. But as, as cloud adoption matures, the next phase of this is, uh, wait a minute, my cloud costs are now significantly more than what I used to pay for you know, data center, outsourced data center, what have you. And that's the next phase of the cloud journey is, is really uh, uh, services, technologies, to help enterprises get get their hands around cloud costs and and what they can do about it, and um, you know that that's that's really uh, new practices are being put in place. Um, if you've heard the term FinOps, um, you know right. organizations and now uh, job careers are being created specifically to really understand the financial implications of cloud computing, and you know that's just indicative of how big the problem is and and how um, important the the ecosystems that are developed developing and the technologies uh, being developed to help uh, enterprises with uh, spiraling cloud cost yeah right do you have am, am i able to ask do you have any uh, maybe some hard numbers for like a, any particular relevant case study maybe you might be able to share of where azul has helped a company with that absolutely cost? so a, a little bit of a background about azul and, and what we provide so Azul has a 20-year history in delivering solutions specifically for the Java platform. So Java represents far and away the most popular language and, and infrastructure platform for how applications are developed and deployed in enterprise and public sector and universities. Java is everywhere, across every vertical you can think of. And so it really is ubiquitous. I liken Java to the, the mortar and the brick walls of the enterprise, right? So it, it really is everywhere. So extraordinarily popular, no end in sight in terms of its popularity. So um, what's really been interesting about, about this cloud cost problem is that using Java, you can actually start to impact the cloud cost problem. And specifically in, in cloud spend, more often than not, 
the majority of cloud spend is the compute uh, cost. And, and when I say that, I'm comparing compute to storage to networking. And compute typically represents the majority of cloud spend. And so anything you can do to reduce the amount of compute cost is going to have a first order effect in terms of total cloud spend. Now, how does Azul play into this? Azul provides a Java platform that's more efficient and more performant than something, say, from Oracle or you know, other uh, uh, Java distributions out there. And it's a pretty simple value proposition. If your Java applications run faster using our product, which is called Azul Platform Prime, that means fewer number of cloud instances are needed to be able to achieve you know, the given workload or support the number of users that a business needs to support. If you need less compute, that means your cloud bills are going to be lower. So simple value proposition. Obviously, there's incredible innovative technology behind it all. But what we work with enterprises is, is to, first of all, educate them on the potential, show them how easy it is without any change to the application, simply by changing a piece of software called the Java Virtual Machine, the JVM. And tomorrow, they could start reducing their, their cloud spend. And specifically to some examples, we have many of our customers that save anywhere between 20 and 50% in their overall cloud bill simply by changing their JVM. That's brilliant. So that, that sounds simple to my mind. Just use your JVM and immediately cost savings result. That's, That's right. Yeah, yeah. And actually, you mentioned your 20 year background in Java. I understand that Azul has, outside of Oracle, the most, uh, you know, the largest Java team, the most Java experience anywhere in the world. That's fantastic to hear. Yes, we, we've really, since inception, and, and myself and our, our CTO Guild today started the company with that exclusive focus and um you know it's i think it's really paid off for us in terms of being able to build um you know what i would humbly say is the best uh the world's best job engineers uh, certainly no no disrespect to any other companies in in the space um but i'm extraordinarily proud of the engineering team that we've built we've always been a very innovation engineering led culture and, and very focused on delivering the world's best products for the Java community. And as a result of that, 20 years in, um, you know, we truly have, uh, you know, developed a tremendous, tremendous amount of, of uh, trust in the customer base. Um, we have you know, tremendous customers around the world, uh, companies like MasterCard and, and, uh, uh, you know, three out of the top five banks here in Australia, uh, Netflix, um, uh, you know, gaming companies around the world, um, uh, Volkswagen cars, right, on and on, right? So all of these very important businesses are trusting Azul to power their Java-based applications. And so that's what's been fun for me and why I've been here for 20 years and continue to be excited about coming to work every day is not to talk about Java, been saying that for 20 years, right? But it's much more so about what our customers do with Java and the impact that, you know, we have on, on everyone's daily lives. They may not know that every time they watch a Netflix show, that's actually running on a Java-based workload that's running on Azul. Yeah. A, lot of consumer, a lot of consumers don't know that, but we know that. And that make, that's what makes it a lot of fun to know what kind of impact we're having as a company. That's fantastic. What if we have people listening who are, you know, .NET, something else, and they think, oh, well, this doesn't help me. I, I, is Azul able to help people re, re-platform to Java? Well, not really. I mean, the reality is the Java market is so big that, you know, we, we don't really get into the, you know, you should change language debate. It, frankly, that's a religious debate and and one that, you know, if, if someone has chosen .NET, they they have probably done that for reasons that make sense for their for their development uh, uh, methodology or for their particular business case. And they may be quite happy. So, you know, the, the, the market is so big for us just focusing on Java where it is. We don't really get into the, you know, we should try to pull people off another language, these types of things. Um, there's just so much job out there. That's our focus. Okay, fantastic. And I understand you've had some success specifically at the University of Technology in Sydney, one of our prominent universities. Are you able to speak more about that? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, you know, in, 
uh, being here this week has been wonderful because we also uh, announced that uh, a, a really interesting uh, partnership and, and uh, customer success that we've had with the University of Sydney. Specifically, one of the things that's happening in the Java space is that uh, Oracle, of course, because of their acquisition of Sun, um, it has you know quite a a presence in the Java community and and quite a lot of business that they're providing support for Java and distributions of Java for their enterprise customers and universities, public sector, et cetera. One of the things that's ha happened over the last five years is that there's been more and more uh, of, of users of Java that are using open source Java. It's called Open JDK, developed in the open source community. And uh, what, what say, you know, five years ago, maybe Oracle had 65 or 70 percent market share in terms of, you know, when a when a Java application was run, it was being run on a, on an Oracle JVM. That is now 30 percent and, and continues to decline rapidly. In combination with that, analysts tell us that Oracle's revenue has roughly tripled in that same time frame. So you have declining market share and increasing revenue. What does that mean? Well, that means that Oracle is charging more and more for each enterprise that continues to use Oracle Java. So it's a very big pain point now for enterprises. And even this past January, Oracle changed their pricing yet again to you know what I would say is, is really a nonsensical way of pricing because instead of pricing based on usage, which is makes sense, that's how most common uh, software is, is licensed uh, and, and priced, Oracle has now moved to a per employee based licensing metric. And so what that means is that if you're a 5,000 person organization, but you only have a single instance of Java, you could be a million dollars of what Oracle would expect you to pay. So, you know, there's a, now a major disconnect between the value that is being provided and the price that's being asked to be charged. Well, the good news, and you know, this is, it's not just us, there's plenty of other, uh, uh, Java runtimes or JVMs that can be used, it's very straightforward for an enterprise or an organization like University of Sydney to tr transition off Oracle onto an alternative like our products as old platform prime as old platform core. And as a result of that, our business is really flourishing because we, we, we work with our customers, we educate them on how straightforward it is to make a change. And what we al allow our customers like University of Sydney to do is move off of commercially licensed, proprietary, Oracle, expensive, onto pure open source, much lower cost, much better value as well. And uh, as you can expect, uh, our business is, is doing tremendously well as a result of, of, of that, uh, of what's happening in the Java space. That's fantastic. So actually, there's, you know, there's an old joke, you know, um, you want a good, fast, cheap, choose two. So but really, with Azul, you're saying a company literally could change their Java virtual machine changed changed to running on Azul, and not only does it run faster, it, it, it lower cost as well. That's exactly right, David. Yep, That's wonderful, <laughs> excellent. So I guess um, you know we, we mentioned you're here in Australia, which is wonderful. So how um, I guess what opportunities do you see in the APAC or ANZ region? How you know we like to think we're a bit special. How how important is the Australian and uh, and our neighbour market to Azul? I guess. Just oh, yeah. Absolutely is. It's, um, you know, as, as an American company, as you'd expect, historically, the majority of our business has has been in North America and, and then in Europe. After that, uh, we've made significant investments over the last two years uh, in the APAC region and uh, specifically in, in Australia, in um, in Japan, in Korea. Malaysia, Philippines, Singapore are, are operations for uh for uh, APAC is is based in Singapore, China. Um, we just had a great new win in India. So um, absolutely the fastest growth territory for us is APAC in general. And you know one of the things that we've really been happy to see in Australia is 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 it's a very technically sophisticated market. There's a lot of innovative things, new applications, really kind of pushing uh, application and and the DevOps community, of course. Companies like Atlassian are, are a big part of that, right? Really one of the great leaders in terms of, of, of DevOps methodologies and DevOps practices. And as a result of that, you know, we found the Australian market you know, quite 
quite um, interested in, in the types of products that we sell, and uh, we're very excited about, about the potential. We're here this week not only to meet with, with our existing customers, as I mentioned, we three out of the top five banks in, in Australia are Azul customers, and so, of course, we're here meeting with them and, and supporting them and continuing to um, uh, you know, make, make that an important part of our business. But we're also here um, to build our, our channel um, and specifically, as a smaller company, of course, even though we have people in Australia, we can only touch so many enterprises and universities and, and you know, government sector, et cetera. And of course, the way you do you do that more effectively is to develop a partner network. And so um, over the last year, we've made significant investments in terms of forming distribution channel, um, uh, uh, creating and enabling uh, value-added resellers to be able to effectively sell the products that Azul provides. And so a lot of our work this week also is, is meeting with our, our distributor and our channel partners to get them excited about Azul, train them on Azul, and, and ultimately allow you know, more of, of Azul solutions to be, to be able to be provided to the broader Australian and New Zealand markets. Yeah, wonderful. And while you've been in Australia, I understand you've been to the uh, Gartner conference. And I guess I'm interested to know if you have any insights, perspectives, I guess, you know, what, what struck you as interesting at Gartner and yeah, is there anything you'd like to share? Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I did a, uh, a talk at the, at the Gartner uh, is the infrastructure and, and, and cloud uh, conference. It was held in Sydney at the, at the Hilton there uh, Monday and Tuesday of this week. And uh, we, we found the show fantastic. We, a lot of, of enterprises and organizations uh, uh, came to learn about, all sorts of things. Of course, it's not just related to Java. It's you know everything in DevOps to you know infrastructure and, and security and all these different types of things. But it's it's a wonderful audience to be able to have a very focused set of discussions with with people that are interested in, in looking for um, new technologies and and innovative vendors like Azul. Um, the talk that I gave specifically related to the area that that we spoke about previously in terms of the problems of cloud cost. Um, I, I spoke in, in general terms about the various things that enterprises are doing to try to get their hands around cloud cost and what to do about it. And then obviously gave a bit of a sales pitch about Azul and, and how we can help uh, enterprises as well with our innovative technologies and products. Yeah, wonderful. No, well, I'm sold. That's been, um, if I was running a Java-based enterprise, I'd switch to Azul right now. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> So no, that's, that's been wonderful. Scott, I've really appreciated your time. That's been very informative. Um, I've, I've learned a lot and I appreciate you making time uh, in your busy schedule to speak with us. Thank you, David. Really, really pleasure to meet you and uh, appreciate your time of uh, allowing us to talk more about Azul. No, thank you. That's been Scott Sellers, Azul CEO. Thank you, Scott. Thank you. Thank you, David. Excellent.